Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking the talk today. So if you've been in business for not very long or you've been in business for a long time, either way, this is going to kick you in the pants. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Uh, if you don't know what the show is about, it is a podcast all about the business side of window cleaning and any service business. Go back and watch every episode. We have 190 plus episodes now. I've been doing this for three, gosh, three in a three quarters of a year, <laughs> 3.75 years, almost four stinking years. So go back, watch all the episodes you want. You can see me change sizes and lose prepubescent facial hair and everything else if you're watching on YouTube. If not, you're listening. I thank you for listening. We have a ton more people listening than watching, but if you do want to comment at all, go to YouTube, search the video, and you will find it. By the way, if you're, it's not your first time here. If you're one of the awesome, cool kids, you watch every episode... And you order with me, and now there's another layer. If you do all of that and you have the new America Window Cleaner magazine, huh? look at this, sticker sheet, stickers. If you haven't gotten it, go subscribe to American Window Cleaner magazine, of course. But uh, thank you. It is because of you that I get to live the lavish, lavish lifestyle. I'm on a yacht right now. I mean, look at this wood behind me. That is real Madagascar pine. It's not anything. It's actually paneling. But I do make my living from you guys um, subscribing to the magazine and, of course, ordering through me for your window cleaning supplies. If you want a guy, I'm your guy. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Save it is really my cell phone. I really, really actually answer. If you have questions on anything from bidding to whatever, let me know. I'd love to help. And put your orders in through me. I get people just text me. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Pull the trigger. I love it. I love it. You guys are the cool kids. You are the epic kids. If you order all your supplies and you subscribed to American Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com, <laughs> then you're an epic kid. Be an epic kid. Go do all that stuff. Well, anyway, so today we're talking about... A kick in the pants. We're like talking motivation. We're talking motivation. I love motivation when it can resonate, when it actually hits home. Motivation's huge. I watch what I can, sales related and business related and uh, uh, guru related. I watch all that stuff because I love to be inspired. I love when I didn't even know I needed it and I get something or watch something or listen to something, audiobook, whatever it is, and all of a sudden I'm like, dang, whew, I'm fired up. I love it. I love it. I hope you guys love motivation too. If you don't, this isn't the episode for you. We're not going to talk too much business. We're just going to hopefully light a fire inside you. If you're watching on YouTube, thumbs up the video. If you're listening anywhere podcasts are, go ahead and leave a review. And yeah, that would be awesome. But every now and then, you get demotivated. And this time of year, I'm recording this. I don't know when you're watching it. But I'm recording this in the middle of February. The middle of February is a really, really hard time. Here's the reason. So when I moved south, I live in North Carolina now. Um, I'm from Wisconsin where our spring in Wisconsin started April, May is when that kind of happened here. We have Robins already. We don't get really snow on uh, people from Texas. Could they used to could say that can't anymore, <laughs> but, um, so our spring is actually coming up pretty darn quick. We're in the fifties. We're starting to pick up to the sixties and you can see that calendar of date, you know, weather going up, but it's not here yet so we come off of winter right you guys are all been twiddling your thumbs hopefully you've been busy but a lot of us especially if you're in a winter place not as busy as we'd like to be kind of just hanging out like man 
Can't wait for spring to come. By the way, we always wish for the busy season. And when the busy season comes, we're like, oh my gosh, I wish it would just slow down, right? But uh, I love being busy. I like uh, having things to do where you work so fast you don't have time for your thoughts. But that's where we are right now. We're sitting there kind of in our heads going, man, it's got to come on, man. So I feel like I've been doing this forever. For us, it's rain. I feel like we've had rain every day for the past like 14 years, it feels like. I know that's not true, but that's what you feel like this time of year. So sometimes you need that push. We're going into spring. We're going into spring prep. We're going into 2021. We're going into a season where this season is going to be better than our last season. And you want to know something? Most people in 2020 had an epic year. Comment down below if you're watching on YouTube if you had an epic year. Just write epic and I'll know. But if you had an amazing year, we need to build off that. You cannot go from a COVID year to 2021 and go down. We all have to go up from there, but how do we do that? There's so much more where we're like, I, I pushed so hard last year. You pushed so hard last year to get where you were that this year you're like, I'm ready. I want to do it again, but I don't know. I just, there's so much. It was so much. But I'm going to tell you something. No one is going to push you. No one is going to push you. If you're married, you have a spouse that is more than likely going to remind you that you need to be working, remind you that, you know, you should be busy, but also remind you you should spend more time with the family and remind you that you got to go see your mother-in-law. And then, Right? They're reminding you, but they're not pushing you. They're not going to push you. People will not push you like you can push yourself. They just can't. Hustle has to be inside you. I hate the word hustle. Hustle is one of those like, oh, hustle, cliche, blah. I hate the cliche side of hustle. But the fire that's inside you, that is only you blowing on those embers. You're the reason that it is as hot as it is, as it burns as hot as it is, and that you can get as much done. You're the only one that's going to push you. Because you want to know something? No one cares if you fail. You're like, yeah, you say that because you're a cold-hearted bad word. <laughs> I don't. I try not to swear in the podcast. I have gone this 190 plus episodes of not swearing in this podcast. So there you go. Sometimes it comes out like that. But no one's going to care. No one cares if you fail. And you go, yes, they do. My wife would really care if I... No, because she would assume you're going to find a job. Remember this. When you got in, when you told people that you were going to start a window cleaning company, what do they say? Think back to that time. As long as you're not driving, really think. Close your eyes if you need to. Think back of the first time. I could tell you the exact time I told any other human being what I was going to do. It was my dad and my uncle. I was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I didn't tell you. I decided I'm going to start a window cleaning business. And they both literally busted out laughing. No one cares. No one cares if you fail. You care. Whenever somebody starts a small business, right, because the small business rate is so high, people don't understand risk. They don't understand hustle. A lot of people who, not us, but a lot of people who are business owners, they go to work when they're told to go to work and punch in when they're told to, and they don't care because they're just doing this thing and this is what I do. I show up and then at five, I check out. <laughs> I'll take lunch. That's what they do. So they don't understand the other side of like, I'm risking everything to do what I'm doing. That's why when you tell people what you're doing or that you're starting a business, almost every time, so we go, oh, wow, yeah, you're starting a business? That's awesome. What's your, like, backup plan? Huh? There's no backup plan. What? Oh, guess what, Mom and Dad? I'm going to be a doctor. Oh, nice. What's your backup plan? No one says that. But you could say anything, any type of business where you're starting your own business, people will talk about backup plans. Well, you know, 
a lot of businesses fail, you know, just, just get ready, you know, be, beware of that. Businesses fail because people aren't business people. People are trying to run a business while not being an entrepreneur. People don't have hustle. There's a lot of people who start business and be like, yeah, I'll do this. Look how easy it is. My boss makes a thousand dollars a day and then pays me. He's making all that money and doing nothing. I'll start my own window cleaning business. They go and start their own window cleaning business and like, oh crap. There's a lot of business stuff, right? People don't understand it. They don't understand business and they surely don't understand your failure. They do not understand your failure. They don't understand that if you failed, it's because of you, right? That's probably my least liked thing that I say because I say it and it sounds wrong, but I know it's right. And none of us who are watching this right now have failed in exactly what we're doing right now. Because here's the thing. If you fail in something, it's either a failure or a lesson. And I'm telling you, I've never failed in business. I've learned a heck of a lot of lessons. I've learned expensive lessons. <sighs> I did a mall booth one time where I'm like, oh, a kiosk around, around Christmas. She's like, oh, for another like $1,500, we'll give you six weeks instead of four. I'm like, oh man, I'm going to make a killing. This is going to be amazing. I can't believe no one's thought of this. I'm going to get this booth. I can have my staff at the booth, you know, rotation. Well, guess what? I sold one gift certificate in six weeks. And it was for $50. Couldn't get anybody to bite. I couldn't get anybody to bite. I spent a ton of money, a ton of money. I even added on extra weeks because in my head, I thought this was going to be absolutely amazing. And did I fail? Absolutely not. I learned a valuable lesson not to do those again. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars going into winter time when I have no thousands of dollars to do. And then on top of that, I couldn't keep paying staff because I'm losing my socks on this thing. All of a sudden, I'm working all the time. Black Friday comes along. I'm there at like 4.45 in the morning until like 11 o'clock at night or something because I'm like, well, I'm not paying other people to just sit here. It's horrible. I learned lessons. And I know you've learned lessons too. People aren't going to understand your failure. Because for people, they don't go to a job and their job goes, hey, guess what? Uh, yeah, your position's been outsourced. We're no longer going to need you. Or you suck. Uh, you're fired. All of a sudden, there is no option. There's either failure or no failure. They're either working one day and not working the other. That's failure for them. For us, there is no failure unless you allow it to be failure. If you allow it to turn failure into a lesson, that is a huge, huge perk in small business. Now, when you feel like things are just getting you down and getting you down, like 2020, dude, March, you guys know that I do this mainly, right? This is my main gig is I do uh, sales for windowcleaner.com and, of course, uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Do you like, by the way, I've plugged the magazine like a thousand times. It's awesome. But anyway, it finally hit mailboxes, by the way finally hit mailboxes it is way behind the post office sucks uh, but people are getting it and they're super excited and i just want more and more uh subscriptions but anyway people have to call me and i have to call them and hey hey tom remember we were talking about the water fed system i'd love to help you out in any way i can uh talk to them get them to the point where they're like yeah you know what this is the right decision for my company i want to go ahead and move forward great for me, sales is just helping people understand what they need when they need it, right? People usually come and go, I have this need. How can I fill it? And my job is to tell them the right way because I'm putting my name on it. In the middle of COVID, that didn't happen. I literally had a full week in March, the busiest time ever. And I sold a total of like five grand an entire week. Like... That's not worth me turning my computer on in my head. Like I was sitting there thinking, you know, I should just take a month off. I should just make zero dollars and not work like a fiend trying to get this all, you know, sales. I'm calling people and going, why are you calling me? Do you know there's a pandemic? Well, yeah, absolutely. But we're trying to plan. No, I'm not doing anything. I don't even know what's going on. I don't know if I have a company anymore. At that particular point, 
you understand that your lesson is a really, really hard lesson that you need to learn. But some of us need that motivation to get up there. That fire that burns inside of us, if you have it, those are the times that you need to you need to warm up to it, right? And there's going to be hate. In business, there's always going to be hate. Now, you guys are on the forums. If you're not, check out Pro Window Cleaning. Check out uh, window Pro Window Cleaning for newbies, which is now like Pro Window Cleaning 2.1 or something. It's changing out. There's a lot of really awesome groups on Facebook, but guess what? It's like those guys that fish with nets in the ocean. They catch catch a lot of crap to get the good things that are in the net. They got to throw back a lot of stuff. That's the internet. The internet sucks. There's just there's a lot of dumb garbage and trolls out there, but there's a lot of good information. Hate runs rampant. If you ever want to see people hate on each other, especially in a business, go to Pro Window Cleaning. You'll see more hate for something so stupid than you'll ever see in your life, but window cleaners get bored in the winter. That's why it's there. But in business, you get hate. Now, there's some people who just get it and get it and get it and get it and they pull it back. Oh my God, I'm doing this all wrong. I'm just horrible. I can't believe... Oh, this sucks. I'm so... And they just get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and they get uh, consumed with it, obsessed. If you've seen the movie by uh, Pixar or Disney, I think it is, Soul, a certain part is like there's, there's, there's beings in there that get so overwhelmed with certain things that that's all they can think about. They turn into these little grumpy, oh, that's all I do, that's a... That's what people can do. They can die inside. You've heard that. People dying inside. You can't allow that to happen. There's going to be hate. There's going to be people who complain about your company that it wasn't relevant. It didn't matter. And you shouldn't be getting complaints in your company because you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I told a story last week about how a naked guy yelling because he didn't take his pills and get his sponge bath uh, was flopping his genitalia around telling uh, my text that if they want to look at his D word, they can look at his D word. Uh, And then that person complained on us because apparently when his wife let us in the house, he wasn't ready, right? Unwarranted. There's hate from that. There's hate from your family sometimes. They don't mean to. They want your best. I want you to be safe. I want you to be secure. Guess what? Not being an entrepreneur is safe and secure. Not being an entrepreneur is safe and secure. Nobody goes to uh, your job, you're working nine to five in a cubicle and go, wow, how's business been, huh? Nobody says that because they just assume it's good you're there. But when you're a business owner, how's business been? How's business been? How's business been? Everybody goes, oh, great, great, great. It's like when somebody comes to you and they go, oh, how are you? Oh, I'm good. You're good every time. You may have a stomach cold and you're still going to be like, I'm good. If you tell somebody, try this. If you're bored, and you want to try some entrepreneur uh, black magicry, try this. Next time somebody says, oh, how's business? Go, oh, man, it is slow. And watch them just just faint inside. Like, oh, it's slow? Oh, man, what are you going to do? I, oh, geez, it's the economy, man. It, it, can you get loans? Can you save it? Can you? D-? I just said it was slow. Like, I didn't say I'm dying. Things are awesome. They're going to be awesome this year. I'm going to murder my my whole idea and perception of where I could be in business. I'm going to just murder that this year. I'm going to do so good. Oh, but you said you're slow. Yeah, because guess what? Sometimes I'm slow. You know, I don't make monies on Sundays or Saturdays sometimes, right? <laughs> it rained. I, 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 I got 16 inches of snow on Monday. I had to cancel my job. I didn't have any work on Monday. It's the middle of winter. It's always slow. But people don't understand what we understand as business owners. They don't understand what you know, right? That fire that burns inside you, when stuff sucks, you're like, Bruh! right? Like, the fire, it gets bigger because you're like, man, that sucked. I'm not doing that again. I'm going to make... That has to be inside you, has to be stoked, and it has to be done. Guess what? You may have the greatest fire ever. I have a place up in the mountains, and uh, you guys know it is my happy place. It is literally the greatest. I mean, I pull onto my, like, my. I have a nice long driveway through a gate. I pull onto that, and it's just like, ah, I'm here. It's my happy place. Guess what? I have a fire if it's not raining, I'm going to probably have a fire every single night I'm there because I'm going to sit out by the fire and I'm going to hang out. And that's like just chill. But guess what? You can have the greatest wood, the greatest fire pit, the most perfect conditions, dry, right? You can have everything. That fire's lit. Oh man, sit back and relax. Guess what? Fire goes out. 
100% of the time, your fire will go out if you don't tend to it. If you don't do something with that fire, it goes out. Every single time, 100% of the time. Guess what? They have houses. They burn houses down. It's called raising, right? You've heard of that. The fire departments will take houses. They'll train it in a bunch. As soon as it becomes structurally uh, inept, what's the term? I got a lot of firefighters. Tell me the term if you're watching on YouTube down below. Once that house, that structure becomes unsafe for firefighters to be in there because it's taken so much damage, they light the whole thing on fire and they contain it. They just spray the outside, let it burn down. They let it burn down. An entire house, they let burn. And guess what? It will eventually stop burning. The biggest forest fires in the entire world has ever seen. Australia was on fire like a year or two ago. Eventually, that fire just stops. Like, it would burn all of Australia, but it would eventually stop. No matter how big the fire is inside of you, it will always stop if you don't tend to it. And here's the problem. When you're in business, year seven, they call it the seven-year itch. It's really like five to seven. Man, I've been there. I've done it. I've burnt myself out. I've made big checks, I've made little checks, I've made people happy, and I've made people sad. I've done it all, and it's just not fun anymore. Why is that? It's not because business isn't fun, because if you can ignite that fire again, oh man, that second round is even better than the first time, right? For a lot of you guys who have been doing this for a long time, when you get back to being reinvigorated, it may be the right video, it may be the right pep talk, it might be the right anything. Once you get back to being geeked, oh man, that fire goes roaring again. But you can keep up with that. If you can keep yourself excited and happy and hustle and yes, that fire is going to keep building. How else do you do that? You got to build goals. You have to keep goals. Don't tell me your goals. Don't tell your neighbor your goals. Don't put it out on your own Facebook page. Oh man, this year I'm going to do this. Eh." If you want accountability, that's different. I love accountability. I have a lot of people who do accountability through me, but it is not the same as sharing with strangers who will not keep you accountable. What you do is you create goals for yourself and your accomplishments are achieved by yourself. If you can make a goal, man, this month I'm going to advertise every single day. I'm going to do something different from Craigslist to ads and flyers. I'm going to do something every single day of this week, every single week this month. Don't tell Joe Smith on the forums Don't tell those people. They don't care. All they're going to do is give you hate. But you keep it to yourself. You write it down. You read that goal every single day. You write it down. You read it. You write it down. You read it. It's there. It's your daily goal. I'm advertising every freaking day and I'm going to do it. Guess what? After that month, if you do that, if that goal that you set is accomplished, your fire's roaring, you did it. Screw everybody else. That goal wasn't for anybody. It was for you. That's how you do that. There's two things in business. There's show or no. And it's K-N-O-W. Show or no. Right? You either tell people to show them or you keep it to yourself because you know it. Right? Gross and net. Two different, very, very different things. Online. I couldn't tell you in the past 10 years that I could ever really remember anybody talking about their net. Oh man, guess what? My net, minus all expenses, was. No one does that. They go, man, we had a great year, man. I made I made 500000 last year. That's, that's awesome, man. That's cool. That number is for me. That number is not for you. It's to show off to other people of what the number is. Right? I've had people who told me their number and their number is super small, right? In my brain, maybe it was small in business. To their brain, it might have been big. Some people are like, oh, yeah, you know, I only did 30000 last year. Uh, you know, but that's my start, man. I couldn't believe it. I made 30000 myself. That's that's them still showing off. Man, I made 30000 If it's bad, they go, oh, man, I only made 30000 It's them showing off like, oh, man, I'm so regretful. I should have done better. I know I can do better. I'm going to do better. But keep it to yourself when the no comes. Those people who put it out there are for everybody else who's watching uh, Facebook and everything else. And they're like, oh man, I can't believe 
that everybody's doing like a million dollars a year, every single person. This guy said that he makes $250 window cleaning an hour. No, he doesn't. No one does. No one makes $250 an hour window cleaning. They may have. I've made more than that. I have a job that is $799. I do it uh, I do it in an hour and 20 minutes. That's what's set up and tear down on a water fed. $799. You don't see me online being like, yo, I make $600 an hour. Because that's not what I make an hour. It's what I have made an hour. I have one job I do really well on. They're, they're cut-up windows. If anybody wants to know, it's a whole house, custom cut-ups, a billion of them. If I did it by hand, it would take two guys like 11 hours. Or uh, no, two guys. Anyway, I can't, don't remember the uh, prediction. We haven't done it that way in so long. With that being said, that is what people put. They put their highlight reels online. So remember, there's show and there's no. Don't think that what you're doing is not correct because of somebody else's thing. No one's on there. You look at somebody else's marriage, you're like, man, they're always doing dates. You know Bobby Walker? I talk about him all the time. One of my favorite people in all the world. He goes on dates so much it makes me jealous. He is on dates all the time with his wife. But guess what? They probably still fight every now and then. She might not talk to him. He may have to sleep on the couch. Sorry, Bobby. I know you don't necessarily watch my podcast, so I don't mean to talk about you. But the highlight reels that Bobby and I talked about, that's what it is. Nobody's like, oh, yeah, man, me and my wife got in a big fight today. Woot, woot. Right? I uh, guess who's got the stomach flu? Uh, this guy. No one does that. So when you're looking at everybody else and comparing yourself, remember there's two things. There's show and there's no. What they know is not what they show. Always. Somebody's like, man, I made 500000 last year. Cool. What profits did you bring to your company? What was your pay, your salary, and what was the profits on top of everything else and on top of what you paid? What did your company make? Well, you know, it's probably almost close to $7,000. Oh, wow, you profited $7,000? Then I don't care how much you made last year. No one's going to say that. Yo, I got four trucks on the road and we profited $7,000. What? Nobody's saying that because there's a guy out there that's doing his own one-man show making that in one month. Profit to himself. So... There's no in their show. Don't let that kill your fire. Don't let that put out your fire, extinguish your fire, because there's two different sides to it. There's another thing that you're doing right now that no one can take away from you. It's one thing. One thing in this world that somebody cannot take away from you. And it's knowledge. You can have the best equipment in the world. Someone can steal it. You can have the nicest truck wraps and you can get hit by a train. You can have all that information, everything set on your company can be lost except for the knowledge. The knowledge of what you're doing, the plans you have, the knowledge of where you're going, but yet you're here listening to a podcast of some dumb guy, aka me, talking into a mic in front of a paneled wall with a bunch of stickers. You're learning bits of information. You're taking that in and no one will ever take that. Guess what? Your competition is not getting that information. They're not here. You're here. Your competition isn't the one that's joining associations or going to trade shows or going to conventions or going to classes and getting certified and taking on this other knowledge and ordering books and listening to Audible and all the things that you do allow you to be smarter than anybody else around you. There is not one person in the world who knows exactly what you know. There's not one person. Everybody knows different things and it's individual. What you know or learn or want to learn will be with you. No one can take that away from you. Learn everything you can learn and apply it. That's what builds that fire. Remember, hustle can't be learned. Can't. You either have hustle or you don't have hustle. You either make hustle or you don't. That's it. Those are the only two options. Crap can hit the fan. Corona can hit. Everything else can happen in your world. But if your fire is still there, your fire is still there. If your hustle's there, your knowledge is there, right? No one is going to take that from you. You can take a product. 
uh, pyrite, not pyrite. I'm trying to think of it in, in, in on the fly and I forget what it's called. It is a burns so hot that it melts metal. They used to take grenades of this stuff. They'd pull the pin and throw it down into artillery guns in the war. You know, giant artillery, you know, giant. And it would melt the barrel and make it unusable. If your fire is hot enough, it can get through anything. There's fire. You can light flares and throw them into water. They'll fall to the bottom of the lake and still be on fire. If your fire inside is hot enough, you can get through anything. It can burn anything. So keep that going. But remember, you have to keep tending to your fire. You have to keep adding wood. Knowledge. You have to keep adding oxygen, right? You need to keep adding all that stuff into that fire to keep it burning and get it as hot as you possibly can. Hopefully, hopefully, this has helped you get out of a spot. Some of you may have needed some kind of little kick in the pants. Maybe some of you were like in a spot where you're like, dude, this just sucks, man. I'm just like, don't want to get out of bed. Hopefully it helped. If it helped, man, put it in the comments. I love to hear that. But hopefully it helped. Uh, hopefully you're going to be absolutely awesome. But if you haven't gotten supplies with me yet, anything window cleaning, anybody who's watching could benefit from supplies and having a guy like me. We do like 3,000 downloads a week. Something like that. I would love to have 3,000 new customers. So if you haven't ordered from me, please do give me a chance. I'd love to be awesome for you. I really, really would. It takes no extra uh, money to have me as your rep. It takes no extra time. All you have to do is shoot me a text. 862-312-2026. Jersey at windowcleaner.com. That's all my info. Shoot me a text. I can put people all the time. We put everything. They shop. No matter how long it takes you to shop. And then when they're ready to pull the trigger, instead of hitting the like checkout button, they shoot a text off and be like, yo, put it in. And that's how I make my credit. It's like a virtual high five of awesomeness from everybody. So please do. 862-312-2026. Shameless plug, I know. And why haven't you gotten the American Window Cleaner Magazine yet? Look at, you want to see? You want to see? Look at this. Look at the contents. This magazine, uh, I'm super, super proud of. I've put a ton of effort into it. Uh, as a lot of you know that I am now the uh, owner. I bought the magazine and uh, changed a lot of stuff. And um, there is just more articles, more content, more things for you to learn. Um, and it's pretty stinking awesome. So go to uh, awcmag.com and subscribe. It's actually awcmag forward slash subscribe. Every single month you get a sticker sheet also. Those are the stickers from this sheet. You can be epic like me and get a board. Uh, actually, uh, a little bit of a um, uh, sneak pre preview, but the uh, the Dino uh, water fed is uh, coming up. Also, we have shirts on AWC Mag. Go and check those out too, shirts and stickers. But either way, make sure your fire is on point. And until next week there, go out there and be epic.